Hey, I'm here with uh, Mr. James Straits and Joe Patillo. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Uh, I would just like to ask you, what's it take to move a show of, of your caliber and your size? As far as how many rides do you have out here right now? Way too much money. Way too much money, yes. A lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. Rain jackets this year. Rain jackets. That's another question. I don't know. You know, we've been doing it so long, I I think um, everyone involved in the business, everyone wears a lot of different hats. They do what they need to do at any given time. Um, But the fact that it takes a lot of money is not completely without free to Absolutely. How many rides do you have on your show unit working, on your show working? Well, here we have, I have a brother-in-law who's got about 20 rides. We have about close to 70 rides here for me on Christmas. Is that, and how many rides are you moving this season? Is that the whole 70? About 50, about 50 rides. But my brother-in-law is involved with it, so he's got about 20 rides. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, how many employees does it take to move 50 rides? So it depends on the hours. Of course, the the, uh, the hour, the hour of wake has become a big issue. Uh, two years ago, we were clocked in at about, uh, at that time, about 112 percent of our staffing level, which is okay. But a few extra people who are operating these hours for 12 days. That's not bad. At that point in time, it was about uh, just shy of four, around 215 people. 215 So, you are helping our economy by being here because of your employment abilities. I'm sure it helps the local economy. But, you know, we're just a small part of the fair. It's a big fair. There are a lot of, a lot of dollars going through different hands. There's a lot of agriculture, people coming from all over the state to, to defend the exhibits, the commercial exhibits, and the entertainment. And, and we're just part of that. But we do. We spend a lot of money here. We've got guys fixing trucks and spending money with the railroad. We've got suppliers. We've got diesel fuel. We've got local labor that's coming in. So it's uh, there's a lot of money changing hands at a big event like this. Now, Straits is very famous for your train. How does that fit in now with uh, some of your spots are not near tracks? So how do you move from the train to the lot? Well, from the train to the lot, we move most of the stuff with semis. Depends on the distance. In, in, in the case of this fair, we've got the fairgrounds actually right up next to the back of the fairgrounds. So we really don't, we'll, 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 whatever it's hooked up to is what we bring it here. Farm tractor can drive off the, the uh, loading flat and can drive straight onto the fairgrounds. So it takes a left hand turn and 10 yards later we're here. Um, it's not always that easy if we're depending on the route and how far it is. You know, sometimes the heavy equipment. A mile away, we might drive the heavy equipment down the road under escort, or sometimes we load it on the low boy, and may have to move, you know, 10 or 15 miles. But the rail, the rail has, um, just like the truck, it has advantages and disadvantages. I would say the, the two big disadvantages are that the fixed costs associated with any rail move, regardless of the length, there's so many fixed costs that a very short move is not really, it's not really conducive of a rail move. 100 miles, you might as well move it by truck because you can do it cheap. On the other hand, if you're going to move 900 miles, the rail is such an advantage over moving it by truck that it's not even a comparison. And then there's all the, and then if you move further than that, most shows don't have the same move. I know maybe Compton does coming out of Canada. But, uh, you know, it kind of depends. And then I think the other, the other, um, the track of the rail is whether you've got good rail access. There are some places like Long Island where the Long Island Rail has a problem with clearance limits getting through some of the uh, passenger and commuter train stations, uh, wires overhead, things like that. So actual access to places like Long Island or some of the major cities are a little problematic, either from infrastructure standpoint or from uh, availability of the track. You know, the, the, around New York City, Chicago, New Jersey, places like that. So much traffic coming in and out of them that they don't want to dedicate a whole lot of track space to uh, a mile long train. So they sit there and not, so basically they want to put a bunch of train in there, unload it, get that train out of there, and go pick up some more, and turn it over. They don't love us sitting in the middle of their yard for a 10 day period of time, or well, years ago when we played Meadowlands, they sit there for a month. And, uh, basically take up a lot of track space that wasn't associated with the high volume of revenue coming in and out of the yard. So, 
and there's things like that. But in most of the places, that's not the, not the case. And a lot of places have the extra track. But here we're sitting back with these three tracks, two sidings and a main line beside us. And um, we have no problem with the track space here. So this is one of the most convenient spots. Now, how long have you actually been playing the New York State Fair? It dates back to before my time and before World War II. Well, I, say, I think it's been uh, probably close to 60 years now. 60 years, that's all right. Well, the only other question I would have is how many independent concessionaires do you have booked in with you uh, for this event, say? Well, there's probably about 150 concessions, but offhand, I don't know the number of independent operators, but I'd say probably 30 or 40. Very good. All right, sir. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate this. Make sure you come to carnytown.com and check us out.